So today we are making Mongolian milk tea dumplings. I know, two words that don't really seem to go together, but the Mongolians actually like their milk teas on the savory side and it's thickened with millet. So at the end, you're gonna get something that's nice and stewy and kind of thick and uh, it's actually really, really good. And just a reminder for anybody interested in supporting the channel, we do have a Patreon and um, it's actually uh, a huge help. So uh, anybody that is interested, feel free to head over there. So I'm just starting off with a boiling water dumpling wrappers dough. Uh, and the boiling water can be a little bit hot, but it brings really this mass together. And this dumpling wrapper dough is a little bit more on the drier, more heartier side because we'll be boiling the dumplings uh, afterwards. So after you knead it into a fairly smooth ball of dough, we're just gonna let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. So this is obviously not a traditional Mongolian filling, but um, it is the kale and tofu uh, filling that we've made before. So I'll link that down below for that. And it's really, uh, really delicious. So obviously this kale tofu filling that I'm using is not a traditional Mongolian recipe. It's usually uh, probably more done with like lamb, maybe like sheep, uh, something like that. But this one, uh, this filling that I'm using, I use all the time. I, I know I show it to you all uh, all the time as well. And it's just really like nice and hearty um, and very savory as well. And the way that I'm folding this, just very simply, you can fold it into half moons and then I kind of bring it in on the side so that it kind of uh, resembles that dumpling shape.
Okay, so the fun part, we have a little bit of the vegan butter. It's, it's salted, so that's why I'm not gonna salt it too much later. And then I have some millet as well as some flour that I'm just gonna toast up. It brings out all of that yummy flavor. Um, I think probably traditionally for Mongolians, uh, you might use a little bit of that sheep's tail, which apparently is super fatty. Um, and so uh, you just wanna toast this until it gets nice and aromatic. We're gonna put it to the side uh, and then I'm gonna prepare some of the vegetables for the broth. So I think normally the grade of green tea that is used doesn't really need to be that high because you're gonna be boiling away at it. And I also think that usually the green tea that they use might be a little bit smaller and not as leafy, but uh, I had these available. And essentially I'm just gonna boil it just until the flavors from the green tea and the vegetable come out. So just a couple minutes there. And then I'm going to add in my non-dairy milk. So I chose to use soy because it's just a lot thicker that way. And then I'm adding in my millet and flour mixture as well as my dumplings. Now, if you are using store-bought dumplings or like dumplings that you think might crumble and fall apart, you might want to cook the millet for you know 15 to 20 minutes until it softens, until the whole broth thickens before you add in your dumplings. And that might take another you know 10 minutes or so to get everything heated up. This reminds me of like a really nice like soy milk um, ramen broth. It's really nice and creamy and the millet makes it really fragrant, nutty, but then also thicker. So it's just a really nice hearty stew and a very unique way of cooking your dumplings in a savory uh, milk tea mix.